Hey guys, welcome to You Fix It Garage. This is video number four in a five part series that I'm doing over RV system brakes. In particular, I'm talking about a workhorse P series chassis, and the RV that I'm working on is a 2003 Safari Trek 2810. In this video, uh, I'm going to show you how I upgraded the Hydro Boost system of this vehicle from the old late 90s, early 2000 model of Hydro Boost to a brand new AC Delco. Hydro Boost off of a 2021 Chevy 3500 turbo diesel truck. The advantage to this modification is that the new modern Hydro Boosts have a larger piston in them, which creates more braking force and upgraded internals. Uh, it's an improved design. In addition to that, uh, it's, they no longer make uh, Hydro Boosts with a part number for this vehicle. So your only option if you have a Hydro Boost that goes out is to replace it with a remanufactured unit. This modification is actually cheaper and you get a brand new AC Delco unit uh, for less money. So before I get into this, I just wanna say that any modification to your brake system should uh, be taken very seriously. It's an important safety component. This video is being provided for informational purposes only. It is not a guide for how to you to make this modification on your motorhome. You should do your own research, and if you're not 100% confident, 100% sure of how to maintain your brake system properly, you should consult a professional. So with all that said, let's get to this modification. This modification starts by pulling the driver's side wheel off and removing the Hydro Boost assembly from the RV. Because it's such tight space underneath there, I just couldn't get any video of it. So I'm gonna show what that assembly looks like and where the mounting points are up under the RV so that you can get it out. To take your brake booster out of the motorhome, uh, it's easiest to do it from underneath. And what, what I did is I jacked up the front of my motorhome, I took my wheels off. Uh, specifically, you're gonna to wanna to take the driver's side front wheel off so you can get up underneath there uh, block the front end up so it's good and safe, and then you're going to access it from the bottom. The first thing to do is, is disconnect your master cylinder lines, and then I use a very long extension uh, to get onto these nuts and take the master cylinder off because where this is at is behind uh, some body uh, metal, some pieces that it's hard to get to, and really all you can see is a little hole right here uh, where you can see the the top of the master cylinder, but you can't see any of this from the side. You can only see it from underneath. Um, so a long extension helps. You can access it from back here and then turn it and take your master cylinder off. Once the master cylinder is off, that gives you a little more room to work. There's two bolts right there. And uh, you can take those loose from the frame. And once those are loose, then this uh, support piece and this spacer right here will slide off. And then the final thing you've got to do, uh, of course, is disconnect your two hoses and your return hose. And then up here on the front of the master, uh, on the brake booster, there's uh, five bolts. There's one right there. There are two, if I can get to them, down underneath here. And then over on this side, sorry for the camera work here. I'm trying to work with a tri tripod. There's two right there. Um, this one right here attaches to, is that the one? Yeah. This one attaches to a return line, I think, or a line that goes to transmission cooler. And it's just, it just holds a bracket on here that holds a line on. And that's the hardest one to get loose because you're doing it from underneath and there's not enough room to get a socket on this side or on this side, so you have to do it with two end wrenches. But once you get those loose and you take the, uh, the rod loose on the end right here, then the whole assembly, there's enough room that you can lift it up and work it out. And what you'll be left with is from, from here forward that will come out as one assembly. It took me about an hour to get mine out and 30 minutes of it was fighting with that one bolt there that I showed you. All right, here's the two Hydro Boost assemblies. This is the old one. This is the new one. 
and uh, I'm going to talk about the similarities in them and then the differences and the modifications that I'm going to have to make in order to make this new 2021 uh, Hydro Boost work in my 2003 uh, workhorse chassis. I ordered this Hydro Boost from Rock Auto and the reason I ordered it from them is that I could get an AC Delco which is factory uh, OEM uh, Hydro Boost and it's factory new. So this is an AC Delco Hydro Boost and the good thing that is that about the new versus rebuilt is that it comes with these parts right here, and I'll explain that here in a second. So I took both of them. When when you get the, the new Hydro Boost or your old Hydro Boost, there's a mounting plate that goes on the front of them right there. And one of the first things you're going to have to do in order to uh, modify or make this modification is to take that mounting plate off of both of them. Of course, it looks different, but uh, take the mounting plate off this one and off that one. And the way you accomplish that is there's a snap ring that sits in front of this nut and you take your pair of snap ring pliers, pull that snap ring off and then you have to take this nut off. Now there's a special tool for removing that nut and I will place a link to it in the description. I didn't buy that tool because this was a one-off project for me and that tool is about $50. Um, so I, I kind of came up with my own way of getting, getting these off. But if you uh, are going to do this very often or uh, you don't have access to, uh, you know, other tools to make that happen, then uh, you may want to order that special tool. It'll definitely make your life a lot easier because these things are on pretty tight and they didn't come off real easy. So the way I accomplished getting it off of this one, the, the bracket that sits on this has uh, fins on both sides of it. You can't get a wrench in there. Uh, they made this a square nut, so you can't buy a socket to fit it. The only thing that will fit it is that special tool. Um, so what I did is that the nut sits in there. The nut sits in there like that. And I took a punch, a hammer and a punch, and I put it on the corner and gave it a couple good whacks, and that loosened the nut up, and then it just came right off. So that's how I got this one off. On this one, uh, I actually cut one of the studs off because I knew I wasn't going to reuse this bracket and I just got a pair of channel locks on there and I took that one off. So that's got to come off the front, okay? Um, now let's talk about the, the similarities between these and why this Hydro Boost will work, or at least it'll mount up uh, to the new chassis. So there's, there is a mounting plate that mounts to the face of the Hydro Boost here, and there's a mounting plate that mounts right here that goes to the, the frame of the vehicle. So this measurement uh, right here is pretty critical for the new one. So this is six and a quarter inches. The new one is exactly six and a quarter inches, so they're the same. That portion of it will mount up. Another critical measurement is from the face of here to the, where the plunger goes in and that's exactly the same on both of them so i'm good there and then finally uh, a critical point is the plumbing that goes into it um, the the size and the thread pitch and the location is identical on the new hydro boost as it is on the old one so all that'll work that hydro boost will definitely mount in my motorhome so the question then becomes is can we make the appropriate modification so that it'll actually function once it's mounted in there some differences here and some modifications you're going to have to make. Uh, I'll start with the, the easy stuff. These bolts are shorter on the new one. Uh, they're longer on the old one, so you're going to have to back them off. They just unscrew. They're, they're actually threaded down in there. So just, just back that bolt out, back the other one out, screw the old one into the new Hydro Boost. You're good right there. Uh, that's going to give you enough room for your mounting plate and that spacer and then the master cylinder to go on there. All right, the other difference in these two is, of course, the plunger length. So the plunger that comes in the new master cylinder is significantly shorter than the old one. And so you can't reuse this plunger. But the depth uh, inside, so from the piston inside to this face, is the same on both of them. 
So this old plunger will work in the new HydroBoost and it'll give you the same distance between your master cylinder and the HydroBoost as you had in the old one. So that's got to be switched over. Uh, a difference between the two of them is that this old HydroBoost, the diameter of this hole is smaller than the diameter of this hole right here. Around the end of the 90s, the late part of the 90s, they started, I think in 98, uh, they started uh, using a bigger bore in the, the HydroBoost and uh, these small bores became antiquated. For whatever reason, Chevrolet uh, and Workhorse continued to use this smaller diameter booster in the Workhorse chassis. I would suspect it's probably because Chevrolet had a couple thousand of these left over uh, and they were uh, sitting on a shelf and they needed something to put them on and they couldn't put them on brand new vehicles because they had already transitioned to something better. So they put them on motorhome chassis. Uh, that's what I suspect anyway. So where that makes a difference is this little spider retainer clip on the old one is not going to work on the new one. But because this is a, a factory new AC Delco unit, it came with the plunger, the spring, and everything already in it. If you buy a uh, remanufactured HydroBoost, it's not going to come with those parts. It's, it's going to, you're going to have to transfer the parts from the old one. And uh, that clip's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse the new spring, uh, the new spider clip, and the old plunger in the new Hydra Boost. Okay, so that's going to get all of that done. The final thing we got to worry about is the the push rod and the distance from the push rod to the Hydra Boost has got to be the same because uh, you want your pedal travel to be the same. If it's longer or shorter, it's going to affect the height of your pedal and it's also going to affect how far, how short or how far your pedal will travel uh, when you're pushing on it. So uh, because the distance from the face here to the end where the, where the push rod goes in is exactly the same on both of them, uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the old push rod over to the new Hydra Boost. Now when you get this new Hydra Boost, there's a warning on there that says do not remove this, it's not removable if you remove it. Uh, it can't be replaced and you have to buy a new Hydra Boost. Um, I, I have a different opinion about that and here's why. So this, focus, all right. This piece right here is just an aluminum sleeve that is staked around it. So you've got this ball that goes in here and it goes down in there deep enough and once it's in the bottom then they just put very light stakes around the edge of that aluminum sleeve and that's what holds it in. So pulling it out really is not all that difficult uh, and to put it back in all you've got to do is restake it. So what I did is I made a tool uh, to pull these out because you don't want to use like a slide hammer or so I'm crazy something like that because you're going to destroy the internals of your Hydra Boost and you don't want to pull against the front of the Hydra Boost. You want to pull against the front of this sleeve. So let me set the old one out of the way here and I'm going to show you what I did. Let's see if I can get this zoomed in. Okay. So um, this is how this was. Actually, this, this plate was on there because it wouldn't come off um, because the nut wouldn't, wouldn't slide off of it. So I had to pull this first to get it off of there. The nut wouldn't slide off of here. So I had to pull this out. But anyway, so I made myself a little tool and this is all it is. Took a piece of plate steel that's a quarter inch plate and uh, I welded two pieces of all thread onto it. Got a couple three quarter inch nuts and that slides around. If you can see the, the rod right there. And the reason I made this narrow like that is so that I'm pushing against that sleeve and not against the face of the, the uh, Hydra Boost. So I'm not gonna damage any internals. All I'm pushing against is that. 
and then if I can find my top I made another plate to go on the top of it and the way this worked I'm going to take it away from the uh, so you can imagine the hydro boost is attached to it here This slid on like this. And then I had a pin that went in the shackle like that. And then all I had to do was just loosen those nuts and it pulled it right out of the end. So it was set in here like this. And as I loosened those nuts, it pulled it right out okay so that was that one and then the other was the exact same uh, with the exception of where it sat in there so I used I got a, a deal in the middle right there slot in the middle and that's how that one sat in there and then I just again had a piece of all thread to go through there to, to go in the hole so I didn't oblong my hole out. And then I just loosened it up and pulled it right out. All right, so that got the uh, push rods out without damaging them and without damaging the Hydro Boost or this sleeve. So now all I need to do, the final thing I've got to do to make this Hydro Boost compatible with that old chassis. Uh, and brake system is just take th this push rod, tap it in there, it'll only take a couple little taps, and then I'm going to restake. I'm going to restake this. Probably, and I'm not sure what I'm going to use just yet, um, but it doesn't take much because there's no pulling force on this uh, when it's in the vehicle. Uh, there's only a pushing force. So uh, you don't have to stake it in there super, super tight. Matter of fact, you don't want it too tight because it needs to be able to move around as the pedal travels. Uh, it needs some movement to it. But just restake it, and then I'll have uh, a brand new 2021 Hydro Boost that will work in my 2003 Workhorse P Series chassis. All right, so I'm going to get all that done. I'm going to get it uh, mounted in back in the uh, the front mount, the frame and everything, and I'm gonna show you what it looks like before it goes back in the, the uh, motorhome. Here I am out here in my shop, and I've got the whole old Hydro Boost right here, and I wanted to demonstrate how I went about reinserting that push rod and uh, restaking it. So this is the old Hydro Boost. I've already got the new one in the RV, um, but I realized I needed to show this. So I've got a pair of channel locks on here, just lightly holding that uh, tube. And then I'm gonna take a hammer, center you up there. So here is the push rod. So you can imagine this being the old push rod. And I've got this tube held in place so I'm not beating on the internals. And all it's gonna take Just a couple light taps, and that's going to get that rod seated back down in there. Actually, I'm going to have to do it just a little bit more. That one took a little more than I was expecting. So there it goes. But you don't want to be beaten against the insides, and so the rod is in there now, and then what I did is, if I can get this focused, is I took, this is my vise, and just the top of the vise, and then I took a flat blade screwdriver, and right here is one of those notches that was already in the Hydro Boost. Just place the flat blade screwdriver on it, and give it a couple good whacks with a hammer, and then rotate to the next notch, a couple good whacks with a hammer, and to the next notch. There's three of them. And do that, and see how there's a little bit of play right here? 
just do that until that in and out play is gone and that'll have it staked back in. All right, here it is mocked up all together uh, with the rod in it and the mount put on it and mocked up with the master cylinder. The master cylinder won't be mounted to it when you put it back up in the RV. This is just to show what it looks like. Make sure you put all of the carter pins back in the nuts uh, that go on those push rods and the lever from your brake because if you lose one of those nuts or bolts, you'll lose your braking system. And then installation into the RV is just a reverse process of taking it out. I'm going to cover bleeding the brake system in video number five of this series. So that's the next video that will come up. But that's bleeding the master cylinder back, the actual brake fluid. To bleed the hydro booster once you get it put in, there's a process uh, where you have to lift the front of the RV all the way off the ground or lift the front tires off the ground. You connect uh, all your hoses uh, back up to the, the hydro boost, fill your power steering uh, reservoir under the, I don't know what you want to call it on an RV, under the hood, fill that power steering reservoir, and then start the engine. And it, you're going to have to kind of go back and forth because you're going to lose a lot of power steering fluid when you do this. I actually flushed all of mine out uh, so that I could get fresh in there. I didn't want to put old dirty power steering fluid back in that new Hydro Boost. So I filled that, uh, started the engine, shut it back off, went out and checked it. It was actually in the, the power steering pump sucked it all out. So I put more in and I did that until... I could start the engine and let it run and the, the power steering level in the reservoir wouldn't go down. And then with the, with the tires lifted off the ground, you slowly turn your steering wheel from lock to lock in both directions. And when I say slowly, I mean really slowly. If you go very fast, what it's going to do, it's going to froth up that, that uh, power steering fluid. Then you're going to have to shut the engine off and wait about an hour. So go very slowly turn from lock to lock. You're going to uh, actuate your brakes several times throughout that process and what that's doing is it's purging the air out of the hydro boost unit and out of the power steering unit. It's a good idea to shut it down, wait an hour, come back and do it again and then maybe shut it down, wait an hour and then come back and do it a third time uh, so that any bubbles that are created in that system have a chance to dissipate, uh, especially in the reservoir and then you come back. It's, it's a self-bleeding system but before you go road test this thing, you want most of the air out. If you still have problems with the, the hydro boost and it's not working just right, there's uh, some stuff online where they say lift the tires like I recommended, start the engine, and you, you turn the steering wheel a half an inch to the right and then back and half an inch to the left and back. And very slowly you work your way around adding a half an inch every time until you get back to that lock to lock. But what it says is that process should take at least 30 minutes. So you're turning the steering wheel very slowly in order to avoid foaming up that power steering fluid. And that should get rid of most of the air. All right, so there you go. That's what's involved in the modification that I made to my RV. I will say that I did a lot of other work on this RV. I replaced brake pads, one rotor, hoses, the master cylinder, uh, flushed the brake system. I did a lot of other things. But once I got done with the addition of that new Hydro Boost, my brake system works fantastic. I would say it's more comparable to uh, what's in a, my, a passenger car than it is in an RV now. now it's still a 15,000 pound vehicle and it, you still have to use uh, some distance to slow down, but the brake system works amazingly better. So I hope this video helps you. If it does, please like and subscribe. Check out the other videos in this series. You guys be safe out there and enjoy the road.